Hello, I am Ronnie. My name is Gerald, and the topic of the day is osteoporosis. We're going to cover some information, some causes, risk factors, and the positive and negative effects in relation to exercise. First, what is it? Osteoporosis is a disease in which bones become weak and brittle, and they are more likely to break. The regions that it occurs most often in are the hip, spine, and wrist areas of the body. The primary cause of osteoporosis is when the rate in which bones decompose are greater than the rate of bone development. So in other words, your bones are breaking down faster than they're building up. All right, for the risk factors, we have both controllable and uncontrollable. For the uncontrollable, you have gender. Women are typically at a higher rate than men to get osteoporosis. With age, anybody over the age of 65 can get this, whether you're a male or a female. Body size, thinner, taller women are at higher risk to get this disease. Um, if anyone in your family has ever had osteoporosis, then you need to talk to your doctor and make sure that you're not at risk to get this. Ethnicity, Caucasian and Asian women are at a higher risk to get this disease. For the controllable, the sex hormones and the calcium and vitamin D can both be controlled through supplementation but make sure that you have the right meds because the wrong med use can actually promote bone deficiency unintentionally. So you control that. Um, anorexia nervosa, that's an eating disorder, so you control that through treatment or health. Uh, for your activity level, you control whether you have a higher or lower activity level, which we're actually gonna talk about later on in a minute. And you can always, smoking and drinking is bad for you, you know, stop, cut it out and talk to your doctor. Talking to your doctor is an important thing and it's not hard to do. So finally, we are going to discuss positive and negative impacts of exercise and related to osteoporosis. First, we have Wolf's Law, which states that the more weight you put on the bone, the thicker it becomes, which means it becomes more dense, which inevitably means that the bone is going to be stronger. And with resistance exercise, um, resistance type exercises, it promotes bone density and bone growth. And as you exercise, the stronger those bones become, the more stability it's going to have for your body, which means that it's going to uh, have a lower risk of fall related injuries. Um, negative impacts would be a trainer prescribing the wrong uh, exercise for a person with osteoporosis. That would be um, doing more low resistance, low impact work instead of your medium to higher resistance. Um, you go uh, lack of facilities, that is pretty much people with metabolic, met, metabolic diseases and osteoporosis, they really don't have specific facilities to go to to get the proper treatment that they need. Um, and the final concept is overloading, that is pretty much having a person with osteoporosis do more weight than they actually should be. An example would be having a person do a 350 pound squat for five reps, that would not be smart. So instead, some, uh, some tips would be have people with osteoporosis do things like tennis, activities that they like doing, soccer, team sports, or even dancing. Those are some general nice activities for them to do. And if they're at home, uh, have People with osteoporosis do things like wall push-ups or lunges. Those are some good tips. So I hope you guys learned something today and see you soon.